How hard is pain protection film to do? Can you save money by doing it as a DIY person? I, my dad is somebody that always likes to do something himself. If you're one of those people, can you do paint protection film or is it better to pay a professional? We're going to answer that for you in just a couple of minutes. So if you decide to do this installation yourself, you need some tools and you need the film. And the tools that you're gonna need are relatively basic, but they do still cost some money. So you've got a spray bottle. We get these at Lowe's. I think these are $3.50 a piece. You're gonna need two of these. One for your slip solution and one for your alcohol solution. For the alcohol, we use a chemical resistance sprayer because if not, it will corrode the uh, basically inner workings of these spray bottles. These are a little bit more expensive. These are like $10. So you got about $13 or $14 wrapped up in spray bottles. You need baby shampoo. This is only a couple bucks. So say 20 bucks for all of your solutions. You also need a bottle of alcohol. Again, it's only a couple of dollars at Walmart or CVS or wherever you want to get it. You also need squeegees. So we have a bunch of different squeegees, but you could probably get away with basically one of these, three or four dollars, and maybe a hard card to seal some edges and some microfiber towels to so say another six bucks on that. We're up to maybe $30 in tools. And then you have blades and knives, which if you're a DIY consumer, you may not want to use a knife, but to do it right, you will almost have to trim little things here and there. Now, you're not gonna have a knife all over everything, but certain corners and things like that to get a real professional appearance of the installation, you're gonna need to cut some stuff. There's some skill involved with cutting that we're gonna demonstrate for you later. So this is a $10 knife. You're gonna need some extra blades for another $5. All in all, I'd say you're probably at less than $50 in tools to install the paint protection film on your car. So in addition to the tools that you need to buy to do the installation correctly, of course you also need to buy the, the film. And the simplest way or the way that most DIY consumers are gonna do this is go to Expel's website, which we have up right here. And this is the car that we're working on. So this is the Cadillac XT5. You just go to their website, type this in. Now over here, you can see the price that you would pay to order that material. So you've got the bumper kit, and that's $455.95 for the material. And you have the full hood, fenders, and mirrors for $1096.95. Now today, we're only going to do the fender for demonstration purposes, but I want to show you sort of how much money you're saving by using a professional as opposed to doing it yourself. So as far as the material is concerned, We've got $1096.95 for the hood fender mirrors and the bumpers, $455.95. That brings us to $1,552.90 for the material. We charge $1,799 at our shop for a front end on a car like this. That price is going to vary a lot across the country. It might be as low as $1,500 or $1,600 or as high as $25 to $3,000 depending on where you live, but either way, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna be looking at what we do. So $17.99 minus $15.52. So you're saving yourself $247 by doing this job by yourself before you purchase the necessary tools. All right, so behind me, we've got the newest addition to the Horsepower Obsessed Stable, and that is this brand new Cadillac XT5. What we're going to do today is have Aaron who is one of our paint protection film installers. He's our lead installer here at Blackout. And Isaiah both installed some film on this car. Now Isaiah is one of our salespeople, so he's been around paint protection film a lot, but never actually installed it to my knowledge ever, right? I have not. Okay, so never installed a piece of film in his life, but he knew that this day was coming as of about a week ago. So I'm assuming you did some research on how to do it and that kind of thing? Yeah, so like any kind of do it, do it yourself person. I went on YouTube, looked at some videos, and I think I can do it. He thinks he can do it. I think he can do it too. I just don't know how well he's going to be able to do it. So, Aaron, how many cars do you think you have PPF'd? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Probably thousands, probably at this point. Um, he's Expel certified. He's been through an advanced training. He, he does a lot of work on a lot of cars. He's done a lot of exotic cars with us here, Ford GTs, and very difficult things, you name it. So they're gonna be doing a fender on this car. So each one of them will get their own fender. The prep work is gonna be the same. We're not gonna put that burden on Isaiah, but basically just the installation. So the film will be pre-cut for him, just like a DIY person would do if they went onto Expel's website and bought the film themselves. So 
We're gonna get it prepped right now. We'll get it pulled up on the lift and we'll show you what we can do. What they're doing right now is removing the Cadillac emblem from the fender. And a DIY person may not do this, but it's something that we do in our shop all the time. So we're gonna make sure Isaiah does that too. It'll actually make it a little bit easier to do the install, less things to align, and it'll be a cleaner look once it's all done. So this is what they would be doing at Expel if you bought the kit. So we cut the film using Expel software, so it's the exact same kit that somebody would get at their house. The only exception is we've also wrapped some of the edges. So the top edge and the edge back by the door. And that's pretty much become the norm for the industry. I've never bought a kit from a website that sells them to you, so I don't know if they come that way or not, but in this case, they do. All right, so here are the rules, I guess. We're both going to start on this car. They're each gonna do a different fender. They're gonna do them at different times so John can film. Isaiah's going to go first so he doesn't accidentally pick up some tips and tricks from watching Aaron one final time before he goes. So the research that he has done is what's going to provide him the knowledge to do this just like somebody would do in their garage. Any questions, guys? We will time it for you guys just so we can show you the difference and uh, compare maybe what your time is worth as well if you're going to do this at home. So that's it. All righty. Let's roll. All righty. So from the videos that I watched, I'm going to need two bottles worth of liquid. So I'll need one that's going to have um, water, some baby shampoo, things that allow me to put the film on so I can move it. And then another one that's going to have part alcohol and part water. As for how much of each, uh, they did give amounts, but they didn't give like specific amounts. So we'll see how I do on that. Just see how much I feel should go in here. This stuff is like other soap. It should spread pretty good. We'll stick with this and give her a good shake. I can mix drinks too, yeah. <laughs> it got intimidating, didn't it? So from here, um, what are you seeing? I see the top part of the fender and then I see the fender flare. Um, I don't feel like dealing with both of these at the same time. So I'm gonna separate these and hope I don't cut the PPF in the meantime. The videos that I did watch, for them to uh, easily put this on, they roll it up. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. What about squeegee? Yeah, so squeegee, you, you can pick what you want. I would recommend using one of these. Okay. Um, Is this what something I would get right off Expel? You can get that off Expel. There's a lot of different websites. Okay. That's and you, a lot of people use a yellow turbo squeegee. You can use either one that you want. This is harder, and this is probably information you might not have, but that's okay. okay. This is harder. That's softer. That will conform to curves a little bit better. We use those. Okay. I'm gonna start off with the soap solution because I want to make sure I can move it, adjust it to where I need to. Um, and then once I feel everything is in place, I'll start using that and hopefully get everything tacked down. Well, I didn't go good. Did you just use a chop? No. Who taught you the chop? The ancient ancestors.
already have a lot of stuff set, but I can tell there's a pretty decent gap there from the uh, edge, so. For a person who's doing this for the first time, I don't think that's too bad, but let's try and keep my standards high for the rest of this. whatever reason there are certain things I can't get to stick down so like right here and even in this real aggressive curve um, I'm spraying more alcohol hoping the sides to hold much as I want to blame the product. I think when I was trying to unroll this, I stretched out this part here. The film itself is flat. A lot of a car is not. I feel like those curved edges, even like a slight bevel to something, it, it's just hard to get it to conform. You would think it would be easy because it's like kind of stickier, but for you to get everything balanced out, like right here, I try to get it to lay down, but something about it is just not working with me just because it might be bunching up a little bit because I didn't space everything out correctly. So little things like that, I definitely took for granted when I came into this. I obviously didn't space things out and right because I have this little overhang right here, or it should since this is a precision cut pattern just line up. So. That's it. The only thing I haven't done is uh, wrap these in. So I have no idea how to get these edges to stick. I'm using alcohol to clean everything. Uh, get rid of all that soap, but it's just not holding for me. Grab a rag, wipe her down, and see how she looks. This was step number one. They didn't tell you that in the videos.
So Aaron did it in 18 minutes, so 12 minutes faster, which of course that's expected because he's been doing this for a while. So we're gonna analyze both of the fenders and show you what's right, what's wrong, and you guys can make your own decision as to whether it makes any sense for DIY or if you should just pay a pro to do this. I'm gonna show you what's good, what's bad, all that fun stuff. So first of all, the fact that it is on the fender is the first step that is good. Um, a lot of people I think would probably give up. Isaiah, frustrating, easier or harder than you expected? What'd you think? It was harder than I thought it was gonna be. Towards the end, I was getting really frustrated. Really frustrated. So this is coming from somebody that literally is in the shop with us every single day. He sees it every day, so he probably knows a little bit more than the average person. Now, if you look at this area of the fender, we'll attack it in sort of sections here. The alignment up here is really good. He's just, just barely off of that radius. But then down here, he's hanging over the edge a little bit, and that's where you see what we call fingers appearing on the edge here. It doesn't want to stick. Now, after this dries, you could get this to lay to some degree, but to go around this radius just a little bit like that probably isn't going to hold long term. It's going to pop up, it's going to collect dirt, and it's going to look like crap. So down here, you can see we're hanging way over the radius. So you want to stop about right here, and Isaiah's hanging over about a quarter of an inch or so. Back here looks pretty good. And then you can see a lot of bubbles uh, just in this whole area. A lot of that is moisture. Some of that will dry, some moisture is to be expected, but most of this will not. All of this, this big bubble here that I'm pushing around with my finger, you can see there's a lot of air in there. I actually just pushed it out. So that tells me it didn't squeegee very hard. So a lot of that moisture is not gonna dry. There's a gap that's pretty significant right here. You got about a quarter of an inch or so. And then you can see this sort of like what we call silvering. It looks silver and this color does a lot to hide that because it has a lot of metal flake, but you can still see like there's a big spot there, there's a big spot here. And then you have this texture and you can actually feel it in the adhesive, like these hard lines. They're really not going to go away. Um, yeah, I'm just smudging it up. Now up here, his alignment, like I said, is really good here, but he's hanging way over here. So again, this is not going to hold. And over time, this is going to end up collecting a lot of dirt and peeling and, and not looking good. He did get his edge wrapped, so that's good. But back here, this edge is, is sort of hanging. Now, in a shop environment, we would trim this. This is something that's really important to, to take note of, I guess, if you're thinking about doing this yourself. If you trim this, you're going to have to put a knife on the paint or on the surface of the film that is on the paint. If you're a trained professional, like Aaron, like me, like a couple of the other people in the shop, or many other Expel installers across the country, that's not a problem. The film is very, very thick. You can score the top edge of the film and tear it away and never touch the paint with your blade. If you're not somebody that has that touch and they're not trained and you haven't practiced that for literally years, you're probably going to cut your paint. So now, trying to save a few extra dollars has turned into, say he cut the paint right here, if this needs repainted, you're gonna to have to blend into here and into the door and probably into the fender flare. Now you're repainting almost half of the car. A couple thousand dollar job, probably two to three thousand dollar job, plus loss of value to the car and a bunch of other things that you could get into. So uh, that's something to think about if you're gonna do this. Now up here, we're hanging way over, similar to how we were by the headlight. So that's that's gonna lift. As soon as water and moisture gets under there, you're gonna have a problem. A lot of a lot of moisture here, and in this area, his alignment's actually pretty good. This is probably the hardest part of this particular fender, uh, but there's a lot of the silvering and moisture, and you can see the edges aren't really holding here where we wrap around the back side of the door, and none of this is really holding. Now, again, if this dries, you could come back and probably make this stick, so if you let it dry for a couple hours in the garage, you could do that. Now, down here, the main fender part's hanging over onto the fender flare. It's bridged over. So that's gonna be a problem because it's not sticking to the fender like it's intended to. It's gonna get moisture behind there. It's going to lift, no question. Fender flare, pretty much the same story. We got edges hanging over, lots of moisture, lots of air. Now we didn't put any time limit on this, so he could have taken as, as much time as he needed just like he would if this was his car and he was doing it for himself. So you can see that all over the place, moisture. The alignment around the, the marker light here um, is less than ideal. So overall, the very first time he ever touched film, he did a great job. And Isaiah, thank you for being our guinea pig, basically, for this test to show you what somebody would do. Now, let's go check out Aaron's. Isaiah brought up a good point. Some of the silvering basically said, hey, why does this happen? And, and it can happen for a variety of reasons, but a lot of it's what we call pre-tack. 
So it's possible that he didn't have enough slip solution in his bottle. How much soap did you put in your bottle? I didn't even measure. I just looked at something and hoping it, it was enough. Right, so I'm not gonna give away our secrets, but uh, the slip solution is very important. And if you don't measure and you don't know exactly how much you need, you're gonna have a bad time. And that's what you see here. So over here on this fender, this is the one that Aaron did. The first thing that you'll notice on this one is sort of the clarity of the fender. There's no bubbles anywhere. There's no big giant adhesive lines. There's a little bit of a minor adhesive line right here that has a little bit of moisture in it. When that dries, that's gonna go away. This alignment on this edge is pretty much perfect. You can see it's right off of that radius, which is exactly what we want. If you're hanging over, it's going to lift. If you're too far away, it looks bad. You want this installation to be as invisible as humanly possible. Now down here on this edge, we're hanging over just a hair on that radius. Not a problem. You can see even with my finger, it's basically holding. Once it dries a little bit, we can push that down and heat that and seal it up and you'll be okay. This alignment down here is great. Same with around the fender flare here. It's, it's pretty much right on, like I said, right off that radius where it's supposed to be. Your lineman comes the whole way down to the bottom of the fender, doesn't hang over, it looks great. No moisture really left at all other than, than the minor amount that you expect that will eventually uh, sort of group together in very tiny bubbles. This will dry in a, in a day or two at most. Your lineman up here is pretty much right on as well. Right up to this edge, right up to this edge. It's laid down nicely in this groove with no tension, so you don't have to worry about the film popping up. And this edge back here is wrapped and it is holding with the exception of up here, which is normal. This is something we would wait for it to dry. We'd be able to hit that with some heat and get it to lay and maybe trim a little bit of that out. So obviously, Aaron does this every single day for a living. We expected it to be good, but you can see the visible difference between when a professional installs versus when an amateur installs. We did the fender flare, of course, too, and it's the same story. You've got Alignment that's great, our edges that are wrapped are holding, we're not hanging over here, not hanging over here, and our alignment down here by the light is good as well. On a side note, brand new cars are never perfect. Amber, cover your ears. We don't want to point anything out, but there's some debris underneath the clear coat right here. Very, very typical of new cars. We see it all the time. People, for some reason, think that there's never an imperfection in a car. We see it all the time. So. We just finished up with this comparison between an amateur installer and a professional installer. And I think that the results probably speak for themselves in the video. Isaiah, I have one main question for you. If you were gonna do this on your car after trying it yourself, would you do it yourself again or would you pay a professional? My car has a lot more curves than this does. And after doing this today, there's no way I would try it on my own. I'd just be wasting money. So the difference in money was only a couple hundred dollars if you were to go online and buy this material and try to do it yourself. So the question I have for those of you watching and want to do this yourself, what is your time worth and what type of quality installation do you want on your car? Obviously you're installing paint protection film because you care about the way that your car looks. Otherwise you wouldn't be spending thousands of dollars on stopping rock chips. If that's true, do you really want an installation that looks less than perfect? In my experience, our customers expect very, very high quality. I think you would probably agree with that on your own car. So thank you very much for watching. I think it's safe to say, at least from our perspective, it makes way more sense to hire a professional to install your paint protection film. We're gonna try this with window tint. We're gonna try this with some of our electronic systems even, remote start systems. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to check some of that stuff out. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and let us know what you think in the comments. Maybe you've tried to install this before on your own. Let us know your experience. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.